Uh, I was born and raised in New York City. Eh, eh, nací y crecí en la ciudad de Nueva York. And my grandfather immigrated there in the early 1900s and worked in the garment district. Mi abuelo migró ahí en la, en, a principios del siglo XX y trabajó en el distrito de ropa e indumentaria. My interest in cultural arts and textiles has taken me far from my urban roots and pushed me to look beyond what was found in books and museums toward master artists themselves for instruction. Mi interés en las artes textiles, eh, en el arte y en la cultura textil me ha llevado de mis raíces urbanas a mirar más allá y eh, de lo que se encuentra en los libros y en los museos hacia la búsqueda de los maestros artistas para recibir instrucción directamente de ellos. To that end, I traveled, and early on, I met Virginia Davis in North Carolina, with whom I studied ECOT. Por eso, <laughs> por eso viajé des, eh, y desde temprano momento conocí a Virginia Davis en Carolina del Norte, con quien estudié ECOT. It's because of her encouragement and contagious curiosity that I became immersed in the Jaspe Roboso in 2006. Through Virginia, I was fortunate to meet people like Ermgard Johnson, whose meticulous scholarly work is a deep well from which we will all continue to drink. A través de eh, su entusiasmo y su curiosidad contagiosa, eh, me interesé en el jaspe, en el rebozo de jaspe desde 2006, y a través de Virginia, de Virginia conocí eh, el, a personas como Imgard, Imgard Johnson, cuyo trabajo eh, meticuloso es un pozo profundo del cual todos nosotros seguiremos bebiendo. My accumulated experiences and exchanges with artists, artisans from West Africa, Peru, Chile, Uzbekistan, and Mexico have been invaluable. This drives, uh, wait a minute, we share a common way of thinking, and in the case of weavers, the language of thread. <clears throat> This drives our communication regardless of spoken language. As a young weaver, I developed a strong interest in resist dye processes. This term refers to a family of fiber techniques that includes plongy, batik, and ikat, all of which share a rich global history. Los intercambios que he tenido con artesanos de eh, África Occidental, Perú, Chile, Uzbekistán y México han sido invaluables. Eh, compartimos una manera de pensar y en el caso de los de tejedores, el lenguaje de los hilos. Esto eh, facilita nuestra comunicación independientemente del lenguaje que hablemos. Como tejedora joven, desarrollé un interés especial en, el, en los procesos de teñido de reserva, es, el cual es un término que se refiere a una familia de técnicas eh, con fibras que incluyen el plange, el batik, el ikat, todos eh, compartiendo una rica historia global. Alejandro did an excellent job explaining that process, so I've cut those slides, let's get right to the ikat. Ikat is a Malaysian word, and it comes from their word menjikat, which means to bind or to tie. Here in Mexico, that same technique is known as jespe. Ikat is a resist method of binding warp and or weft threads before the cloth is woven. By doing this, one protects the original color of the yarn and introduces dye color to the unbound areas, thus building color and pattern onto the threads through vat dyeing. El término ICAT viene del malayo, eh, como nos explicaban anteriormente, significa atar. Eh, aquí en México también se conoce en algunas, en algunas áreas con el nombre de jaspe. Eh, y el ICAT es una técnica de teñido de reserva en el cual la urdimbre y o la trama se anuda antes de que la tela se teja. Al hacer esto, uno protege el hilo del color eh, en el que se va a introducir y eh, con ello se van construyendo eh, diseños y colorido en, en los hilos. So after the tying and the untying process is completed, the threads are put on a loom, the cloth is woven, and the pattern emerges row by row, as the cloth does. Ikat then is a very unique resist and construction process. It relies on a weaver to bring the cloth to conclusion. Eh, después del amarre y desamarre de, var de todo el proceso, los eh, hilos se llevan al telar, la tela se teje y el diseño empieza a surgir conforme la tela se teje hilera por hilera. El ICAT es una técnica eh, única de construcción y eh, depende del tejedor para completar el proceso. There are four basic categories of ICAT, warp ICAT, which we will come back to, weft ICAT, these pieces are from Japan, This from Guatemala, and lastly, 
two or one, depending on how you see it, double and compound ECOT. Each of these re, uh, utilize resisted warp and weft threads that contribute to the overall pattern of the finished cloth. Hay, hay cuatro categorías básicas, el, el ECOT de urdimbre, el ECOT de trama, y el ICAT doble y compuesto, depende de cómo se vea, en estos últimos dos, el doble y compuesto, se atan tanto urdimbre como tramas para construir el diseño final. Today, this presentation will focus on warp ICAT and how the same technique is interpreted through the cultural and aesthetic lens of three distinct global regions. Cote d'Ivoire, and these images follow Cote d'Ivoire on your left um, in, the, in West Africa, all the way to the right, cloth from Uzbekistan in Central Asia, and in the middle, uh, Mexican ECOT. And I will focus on Tenancingo in particular. Esta presentación se eh, enfocará en el ICAT de urdimbre y cómo esta misma técnica es interpretada en distintos eh, eh, lugares y regiones del mundo. En Costa de Marfil, en, en África Occidental, como la imagen a la izquierda, Uzbekistán en el centro de Asia, la imagen a la derecha, y Tenancingo, esto de México, la imagen del centro. Ok, so before I move into the Ivory Coast, um, as you look at the, the presentation that follows, which will include a lot of process information, uh, just contemplate the following. The place that the work is made, we recognize ECOT uh, from different places because of distinct cultural motifs and designs, which brings us right into the elements of design. So always consider the scale, repetition of pattern, pattern distribution, color usage, among others, and innovations in process, particularly in terms of labor and systems used to execute the work more efficiently and creatively. Conforme veamos los ejemplos a continuación, eh, por favor tomen en cuenta lo siguiente, eh, la procedencia de donde del trabajo eh, puede reconocerse a partir de aspectos distintivos culturales en cuanto a motivos y diseños. Eh, en cuanto a los elementos de diseño, eh, observen la escala, la repetición, la distribución de los mismos y el uso del color. Y en la innovación, eh, eh, Hay que observar el proceso y los sistemas utilizados para llevar a cabo el proceso de teñido de ICAT de manera más eficiente y o creativa. The most common type of weaving in West Africa is done on a horizontal foot treadle loom called a man's loom. And on that loom, they produce long, narrow strips of cloth. When the cloth is completed and removed from the loom, the long strip is cut into appropriate lengths and sewn salvage to salvage to create the finished product, which is generally uh, shirts or basic wrappers, which are like a skirt that men and women wear. El tejido más común en África Occidental se realiza en, en telares de pedal horizontales, llamados telar de hombre, que produce una tira angosta y larga de tela. Cuando la tela se termina, se quita el telar y esa tira tan larga se, cota, se corta en, en longitudes apropiadas y se cose en los orillos laterales para crear un producto final. De esta manera se construyen camisas o eh, telas envolventes, tanto para hombres como para mujeres. ECAT, just for information, ECAT is also done by the Yoruba people of Nigeria and it's also done in Madagascar in southeastern Africa. Today we're going to focus on the Ivory Coast and it is the Baule and the Jula people who are well known for their use of ikat. So that's where my photos come from and it's predominantly with the Baule. Uh, there in Cote d'Ivoire, the process as told to me is just known as reserve. La técnica de ikat también se realiza por el pueblo Yoruba de Nigeria y en Madagascar en el sureste africano. Esta presentación se va a enfocar en Costa de Marfil con los pueblos Boland y Diolo, eh, quienes son reconocidos por su trabajo en el ICAT. Eh, aquí eh, hablaremos sobre este proceso y en Costa de Marfil se conoce como Reserve. So I walk you through the process and everything begins the same no matter what country we're in. So the warp is wound there, they use exclusively cotton, which used to be hand spun, not anymore. Uh, so we wind warp, everything, pretty much all the work goes on outside and to the, uh, your right, is the cross. El proceso, vamos a ver el proceso que es prácticamente el mismo independientemente del lugar de procedencia. Eh, es preparar la urdimbre de, de algodón, 
eh, generalmente se trabaja algodón exclusivamente y antiguamente se trabajaba algodón eh, hilado a mano, ya no. Eh, aquí a la, a la derecha vemos la cruz de la preparación de la urdimbre. Ok, so the warp is then taken in the hands of the weaver who is just making sure the cross is correct and then he is going to take the warp and from here he's made some divisions so look carefully, the warp is going to be put under some tension tension is just being wrapped around a tree and, and tied to another point usually a tree with a little bit of raffia he's just going to make marks, measurements along the length of the warp. There's no tying here, so this is very interesting. He will start to separate out parts of the warp. You can see that in the lower left hand, right hand, whichever um, part. And eh, then, uh, go ahead. El, la urdimbre se, se, se pasa y se empieza a separar los hilos. Es muy importante establecer tensión. Aquí generalmente se, eh, se pone alrededor de árboles y no hay atados. Aquí se, solamente se dividen los, gru los grupos de hilo eh, utilizando rafias. Okay. Now he will gather, just using his hands, separating one part from another part. The part that's going to be resisted, the part that will be going into indigo. So you will see indigo again in a moment. You can see then he takes the part that will be resisted, wraps plastic around it, secures it just with rubber, rubber strips. De esta urdimbre separa la sección que no se va a, a teñir, la protege con plástico, como se ve en esta imagen, y ligas de hule, y todo lo demás va a entrar a un baño de índigo. The only color that's going to be used in these warps is indigo, so it is solamente indigo and y blanco. Solamente habrá indigo y blanco, el color del algodón. Into the indigo pot it goes. You can see at the top on the left hand side, those are some balls of um, dried indigo. So that's what they're using. And we just looked at the process of how that's made and uh, done in Mexico. Um, it comes out, the ikat warp is to the left and there'll be supplementary white warps that are added to make the width, which is not very wide. Aquí está el, el, telar, el, el hilo después del teñido, de, de remover la, los hilos. A la izquierda se ve la urdimbre teñida con añil. A la derecha está la urdimbre blanca, la cual va a funcionar como una urdimbre suplementaria en color blanco. So this is a long linear design. And the threads are then taken to the loom. The heddles are now being uh, threaded. Los, eh, se, se empiezan a preparar los lisos para construir la tela. Mm -hmm. The loom, as I said, all the work is done outside. So all the parts of the loom, the warp, the heddle, and the reed can all be removed later, rolled up, and taken inside. The loom, however, is stationary outside. So it's really a frame. Todo el proceso se realiza en exterior, sin embargo, el, el, los hilos se pueden desmontar el telar, enrollarse y transportarse a un espacio interior, sin embargo, el telar es fijo y se mantiene afuera. Ok, so once the loom is set up, weaving can begin, they work in a plain weave structure, warp faced. And notice the tensioning on the uh, lower slide, the warp is stretched far out and tensioned with a stone or something like that. La urdimbre se, se prepara en el telar y se empieza a tejer en secuencia de tejido plano. Eh, eh, y en la fotografía inferior derecha vemos una piedra que es la que ejerce la tensión en el telar para mantener la urdimbre tensa. Mm -hmm. Ok, so this gives you an idea of what the loom looks like. The warps are very, very long and it's not a terribly complex design. La urdimbre es muy larga y no hay diseños sumamente complicados. However... <laughs> And here, um, Sin okay. embargo, Ay, gracias. Okay, um, so the cloth is very graphic, but here's what happens. So you can almost think of the ikat as a fondo, like a background design. Most of the cloth that's woven there uh, is woven in a weft brocade technique, and that's where the introduction of color comes from. El, el ICAT funciona como una tela de fondo y toda la decoración se realiza con una trama suplementaria mm -hmm. y, y eso es lo que da el colorido. So, in case, in the case of the baule strip cloth, which is what you're looking at, um, but also cloth from North Africa as well, where they have a tradition of strip weaving, the design is very vertical, very simple. However, those visual repeats are created afterward when those narrow bands are sewn together. 
That's when you get the horizontal design. So it's a really very interesting system of design, I think. And this gives you a close-up of the woven brocade. El diseño se construye de manera vertical, sin embargo, al construir la tela, añadiendo las telas al costado una de otra, las tiras, el, el diseño se empieza a transformar en sentido horizontal. This is a typical, typical Ica Paule cloth. Este es un ejemplo típico de los Paule. And some close-ups. Y detalles. Okay. Uzbekistan. <laughs> In Uzbekistan, Ica is known as Abraband, which translates to cloud weaving. En Uzbekistán, el ICAT se conoce como Abraband y se puede traducir como tejido de nubes. There are three centers of weaving, uh, all in the Fergana Valley, which is very famous for its silk ICAT and its uh, silk and cotton production, as well as natural, natural plants for natural dyeing. Hay tres centros de tejido principales en el Valle de Fergana, eh, famoso por su producción de tejidos de seda en ICAT. There's a very strong tradition of silk ikat and also velvet ikat weaving in this area. However, from 1921 until 1991, the tradition was disrupted uh, and all hand production and workshops were illegal under the Soviets. Much of the knowledge of ikat was lost at that time. En este valle, había un, además de haber el ikat en seda, también existía el ikat en terciopelo y eh, sin embargo desde 1921 hasta 1991 La tradición estuvo interrumpida, puesto que toda la producción artesanal hecha a mano y los talleres eran ilegales bajo la, el, el gobierno soviético y por lo tanto gran parte de este conocimiento se perdió o se olvidó. Families are working, but most of them are just learning the business and the work is still is pieced out because people don't know the whole process. However, there are two families who didn't manage to inherit the craft from their uh, their family before them, um, and one of the people is the man I studied with, Rasuljan Mizaramedov. Eh, no todas las familias saben hacer todo el proceso, sin embargo, hay dos familias y una de esas personas que sabe todo el proceso es Rasuljan Mizaramedov. Okay, so again, we start with the warp, which I'm not going to show you, but the warp is prepared, it's on the floor here. And the overall length of a traditional ikat warp is 200 to 300 meters. These are all done in silk, and the silk is very, very fine. It's made on a very large warping reel, and 32 to 40 uh, cones of silk are drawn together. Eh, para la preparación, una urdimbre eh, en general alcanza de 200 a 300 metros. Se prepara en un urdidor y generalmente se utilizan de 32 a 40 conos de seda para preparar la urdimbre. One unit, 32 threads, creates 200 to 300 meters long. One unit is called a libet, and that has its own cross. So there are 100 libets in a traditional width. Sorry. In one warp width. This is one libet? Yeah. One okay. bit, uh, Los 40 conos forman una unidad dentro de toda para preparar toda la urdimbre. Entonces eh, se necesitan eh, los 42 conos son un libit y se necesitan 100 libits para completar una urdimbre completa, una urdimbre. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one libit, 32 threads. Una libit era 32 times 100. Hilos. Okay. Okay. Each libit then is taken around a frame as you see here. The frame is about 2 meters long. That's going to be one ikat repeat, one design repeat. The warp is wound around that frame many times, um, and then the, the top and the bottom are tied together in three places along the length. El marco del, del telar tiene dos metros de separación, y esa va a determinar las repeticiones del diseño del ikat. Mm -hmm. And if you look on the the picture on the bottom, you see little ties going down the length. Those are tying the libets together, just to hold the silk in place. Los, eh, las pequeñas separaciones que se ven en la imagen inferior derecha indican las unidades de los libets que estábamos diciendo hace rato, que son 32 hilos, y eso es lo que va determinando los diseños. Okay, so you're going to have, the design will unfold eventually lengthwise. Okay. El diseño se va a crear de man, a la, a la, al sentido longitudinal. Okay. So Rasul and his family work from memory when they're drawing the designs, and he says there are about 37 steps to the process. 
La familia de Rasul John dice que hay 37 pasos para este proceso. Ok. Uh -oh. <laughs> we keep the silk wet when we're working. And uh, here we go, drawing the design La on seda with está charcoal. mojada cuando se está trabajando. Aquí está el dibujo okay. sobre el urdimbre. And then we mark the pattern on the outside of the pattern with a heavy cotton thread, which is also wet. Y el exterior del diseño se va marcado con este hilo de algodón que está húmedo. And in the center of that we use plastic, uh, plastic to wrap the larger areas in the center for uh, resist and then wind cotton around it as well. Las zonas más grandes en, del centro del diseño se envuelven en plástico para protegerlas. Okay, we've done that work very quickly. Now we're going to wet out the silk and get it into the first bath of dye. La seda se humedece y se prepara para el primer baño. Okay. Water solamente. Okay. The first dye bath is yellow. We're going to make we're going to put the warp in and out of three dye baths and make a kind of cloth uh, that has many colors. It's called eti rang and it's common in the Fergana Valley. Va, uh, esta tela se somete a tres baños y se conoce como eti rang. Eh, es una tela muy colorada, muy colorida, común en el Valle Fergana. In other parts of Uzbekistan, they'll do ikat with only one color. En otras partes del país solo son, solo utilizan un color. Okay, so this has gone into yellow. It's coming out of yellow. En amarillo. And what I didn't mention, the libets go on and off this frame. So you use that frame that I showed you for binding. And then the libets come off, go into the dye, then they go back onto the frame because we're going to untie and retie. Las secciones de la urdimbre se desmontan y montan en este bastidor inicial que les había comentado para atar y desatar. Okay, so we're doing that. And now we're removing the libets again. We've done some untying and retying because we want to hold some of the yellow. So now they'll be white and yellow. And now it's going to go into a red dye bath. So we'll add red and orange. We'll get red over the white areas, orange over the yellow. Hasta este momento se tiene blanco y amarillo. Se ata y desata. Se atan las zonas que se quiere que se mantengan amarillas. Se mete a un baño de rojo y entonces se va a obtener rojo, naranja, amarillo y blanco. Okay. Back on the frame, untie, retie to either hold the orange or the red. And the next stop will be blue. Vuelve al bastidor inicial para proteger las zonas que se quieran mantener naranjas y rojas y se somete a otro baño, a un tercer baño, en esta ocasión azul. Okay, so we're going to add blue and green and brown to the mix. So we have seven colors plus white if we've held any. Se añaden entonces los colores azul, verde y café, eh, además del blanco. Back onto the frames, final untying or the opening up of the abra band. La última fase regresa al bastidor y se desata todo para extender los hilos. Eventually, there'll be a hundred libets that are reorganized after everything is untied. This was a, a smaller warp because it was a workshop, but. Uh, eh, se, se regresan los 100, las 100 unidades iniciales para extender el diseño. Este es un tejido pequeño porque era un taller. So notice we're taking up, we're, we've taken those libets and we're reordering them into the uh, composition that we designed from the beginning. Los libets se reordenan para ajustarlo a la composición inicial del diseño. Okay. This is maybe about 45 inches when it's on the frame, but when it's woven, it's going to be about 12 inches or 18 inches. It's a warp-faced weave, and this is very, very fine silk. Es un tejido de cara de urdimbre de, de seda muy fina, extendido tiene 48 pulgadas de ancho, pero ya tejido se reduce a 18 o 12. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is, gives you an idea of what their loom looks like, not terribly different. Add translation time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay, so there's the cloth. This is a finished uh, velvet ikat that Rasul John's family has been reinvigorating. And another traditional gar uh, type of coat. Uh, the coats are called kalats. Y otro kalat, eh, una especie de abrigo. Okay, we are heading to Tenan Singo.
The Mexican Jaspe Roboso is unique in uh, both in originality of design and the process of achieving it. In my opinion, while it might be lesser known among world ICAT, it is highly significant of the, uh, among the family of resist textiles and has not necessarily taken its rightful place among other beautiful examples from around the globe. El rebozo de ICAT en México, el de Jaspe, es único en, en, tanto en su diseño como en su proceso y en opinión de Hillary es, es mucho menos conocido en el mundo del ICAT eh, global eh, y no ha tenido este reconocimiento que merece. Its fineness of design fills the whole lienzo and takes the eye not only on a vertical journey but on a horizontal one as well. This is unlike many examples of ECOT from other countries, and at first glance, a rebozo can look very much like a printed cloth. Los diseños se construyen no nada más en sentido vertical, sino también se aprecian en el sentido horizontal, y eso lo hace único de todos los otros ECOTs en el mundo. A, a, primera, a primer vistazo, el rebozo podría parecer una tela estampada. The use of a fondo stripe further enhances and complicates the all-over design of a jaspe and makes it difficult to pick out the separate tied units. These are examples of Don Evaristo Borboa's uh, work, and what follows now is an in-depth view of the construction of a tenon single style reboso, as taught to Virginia and I by Don Evaristo Borboa Casas, uh, our maestro. El, también otra característica es el uso de, de listas sólidas de color, lo que complica el diseño eh, general y hace que sea difícil separar las unidades atadas. Eh, a continuación mostraremos el, el proceso de teñido de, según el estilo de Tenancingo, como lo ha aprendido de Don Evaristo Borba Casa, su maestro, y de Virginia. Ok, so these are all cotton. We begin with our cotton thread and uh, taking the skeins and winding bobbins from them. We make eight bobbins for the jaspe warp. Aquí están con el hilo de algodón preparando ocho bobinas para la sección de, de jaspe. Ok, y en la left is a, a warp winding for telar de pedales. pedales. Uh, my focus here is the telar de cintura. A la izquierda se ve el urdidor para el telar de pedal, pero su enfoque va a ser en el telar de cintura. Ok, so once the warp is made, and there are small units of warp in the cross of uh, 32 threads, the warp is taken off the warping reel. Una vez que se tienen las, las unidades de 32 hilos con el, el cruce, eh, la, las piezas se van preparando para los, los amarres. And uh, it is time to take that warp and divide it from the original cross. We make groups called cordones or cordones. And the process here is pepenado. And we are counting from the cross and taking certain numbers of warp threads into groups. The examples here are for uh, warps uh, designed for four cordones. So you might take four threads on finger one. Oh, okay. <laughs> eh, las unidades se van dividiendo, se van subdividiendo en cordones, y esos cordones... I, I lost it. I'll tell you. Okay. okay. Watch. Mira. Okay. With your fingers, certain numbers of threads. Okay. So, from the cross, take the first four threads. De la cruz se toman los primeros cuatro hilos. Finger one. That goes on finger one. Y se van separando entre los dedos. Second, four threads. Finger two. Cuatro hilos cada unidad. Third, mm -hmm. four threads. Finger three. Fourth, fourth thread. Four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's many different ways to do this, depending on whether you want a mirror image design or más grande, it, it's pretty limitless. This is why I think this is a really brilliant system. Hay muchas maneras de construir esto, dependiendo de si se desea un, espe un diseño espejeado. Es, hay infinidad de variantes. Just bear in mind, we have never taken out the original cross. The original cross is there. You can never El lose your cross. El cruce inicial okay. no se pierde nunca. Okay. So we've tied everything in place. We starch the jaspe warp. Todo se ata y se almidona. Mm -hmm. And then we stretch everything to dry. And you can see in Don Evaristo's hand are those cordones. He's just going to tie it along the length of the warp in separate places. Se extiende para dejar secar y se empieza a separar en los cordones. And then it's left to dry. Y se deja secar. Okay. Uh, at that point, we're ready to mark the design, debujado, uh, on the cordones. 
Comienza el proceso de dibujo sobre los cordones. More or less, each cordone, each separate cordone has about 200 threads. Ah, en general, cada cordón tiene 200 hilos. <laughs> okay. So these are large. Each cordone has one part of the repeat. The cada cordón repeat. tiene una parte de la repetición del diseño. Okay. So now, time to tie. Se comienza a atar. Amarrado. And there's a close-up of a finished warp. And está toda atada. into the dye it goes. Oh, no. <laughs> First, we're going to wet it down, and it had all that starch in it. So we're going to beat it, golpeado, to break up the starch. That way, in the spaces between the tied areas, uh, we break the starch up, and the dye can penetrate better. Se moja y se golpea para quitar el almidón y que pueda absorber el tinte del hilo. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to dye the jaspe. Se mete a teñir. And uh, this is from a, a fellow in Tenancingo, Fito García Díaz, who is uh, using a lot of color. So most of the robosas we see are just dyed with one color, usually black or maybe a dark blue, but there are weavers who are certainly experimenting, and we've certainly seen antique robosas that use many colors as well. Fito uh, García. Fito García, este yes. es, un, es un, una muestra de su trabajo, quien usa muchos colores, generalmente son colores oscuros, pero también se encontró muchos colores en, te, en mm -hmm. rebosos antiguos. Ok, now we are cutting away, um, desatado, cutting the knots. Ok. That reveals, look again, there are a few different warps here, but there are the three different warps with different cordones, which are holding the larger design. But now we're going to open up those cordones, so watch what happens. This is the best part. Aquí hay tres secciones <laughs> del, del, del urdimbre y es lo que va a pasar cuando se desamarre. Okay, so now we've got all those small repeats, probably something like 50 or so repeats across the width. So that's how we're building the repeats across the width. Y eh, se van reacomodando las unidades para... Sorry. A lo yeah. ancho. Yeah, okay. And this, just very quickly, this is one design in its different parts. Okay. Este es un diseño en sus distintas partes. In Procesos. Ten, in ten on single fondos are used, so... Oh, we're, we're tying now along each, each unit of design uh, apuntado, so we're just tying the sections down the length of the warp. That's self-explanatory. Okay, the fondo is going to be dyed, that's going to be integrated in with the jaspe. Estas son las listas sólidas de color que se van a integrar con el jaspe. Sometimes we use a couple <coughs> colors, so we might protect one area from another. A veces se protege unas zonas de otras when, en cuanto a color. And when you have both warps prepared, they both are um, put in a light starch. Uh, se almidonan almidon, ligeramente. And then they're stretched out side by side to dry. Y se extienden para secar. Okay. Now those two separate warps need to be integrated into one warp. Las dos secciones de urdimbre se integran para construir una sola urdimbre. Entreverado and Entreverado. There we go. When that's done, we can then start dressing the loom. Okay. Y se monta en el telar. Okay. And again, this is the telar de cintura, so this is how we work. And Estamos viendo imágenes del trabajo en el telar de cintura. Mhm. Mm and then one needs to set up the vara de giote. La vara de giote es vara de liso. And then we're ready to weave. Y comienza el tejido. Okay. And these are friends from Tenancingo. Uh, Carlos Gonzalez, Marta came to visit us. Mi hija was with us one year. Um, a finished reboso. And I'm sorry, I added a few slides because I cannot talk about the Roboso without mentioning the yeah, empuntadoras. <laughs> okay, so uh, the punta is a very important part of Los the empuntados Roboso. Son otra parte muy importante del Roboso. Okay, I think I am very much out of time. I'm going to whiz you through some of my work este that I've been doing for over 25 years. And I'll just show you, I can talk to any of you about it later. I've been incorporating these techniques for more than 25 years, either alone or together. I'm fluent with other resist uh, techniques as Durante más as de 25 well. años ha estado incorporando estas técnicas en su propia labor artística. And to sum up, I will say... 
y just para a resumir. few words. Each generation transforms the work of their elders, elders and mentors. In many cultures, the making of things is a collective social activity, and the final work bears witness to the efforts of many working together toward a single goal. Cada generación transforma el trabajo de sus eh, mentores y, y antepasados. Y en muchas culturas, la creación de objetos es una actividad social y colectiva. Y el trabajo final es un testigo de los esfuerzos de muchas personas trabajando juntas para un fin común. This is a saying from the Yoruba people. Cloth, they say that cloth only wears to shreds. They're from Nigeria. I interpret this to be a reflection of the essence of fabric and how it mirrors those who are involved in its physical life. The maker, the owner who brings it into their home or wears it on their body, the teachers, mentors, and ancestors who pass on the traditions, knowledge, and rituals. When a textile eventually disintegrates, it persists through our personal and collective memory, as well as through oral, written, and visual descriptions. Este es un dicho yoruba que la ha intrigado mucho desde que la conoció de Nigeria, que dice que la tela solo se vuelve, se come. Ah, perdón. Es donde dice que la tela solamente se viste en pedazos. Y eh, ella lo interpreta como una reflexión, en donde la esencia de la, de la tela es un reflejo de la vida física de tanto quien lo hizo como de quien lo portó. Y, eh, y sugiere que cuando un textil se desintegra, vive a través de la memoria colectiva y personal, así como en la historia oral, escrita y descripciones visuales. Scholars like Ermgard Johnson, Elsie McDougall, Ruth Lechuga, and Teresa Itelbide appreciated the importance of enduring cultural traditions and symbols, as well as the social and economic realities of craft as a livelihood. They were passionate about learning and they were persistent in their quest to preserve and document Mexican textiles woven or elaborated with surface techniques. Each understood the contribution of indigenous work to world culture and knew that such skill and knowledge had to be documented so that it would live on. And I thank you for your time. Personas como Ingar Johnson, Elsie McDougall, Ruth Lechuga y Teresa Turbide apreciaron la importancia de estas tradiciones eh, culturales y del simbolismo, así como la importancia social y económica de la artesanía como una forma de vida. Eran muy apasionadas sobre el proceso de aprendizaje y, eh, y documentaron las tradiciones textiles del tejido, así como la decoración en superficie. Eh, cada una de ellas entendió la contribución del trabajo indígena en la cultura global y eh, supieron que la, esta tradición, estas habilidades, debían y merecían ser documentadas para que pudieran persistir y preservarse. Muchas gracias. Sí.